<laughs> we're going to get into headline number five, which if you'll notice also includes our a and put you on the spot question oh. and has to do with Nike filing for virtual goods, trademarks in shoes and apparel. Now this question comes to you from Kristen Kohler Burroughs, and she wants to know with Nike banking on the ability to leverage its tremendous physical assets in the virtual world as a new potential growth vehicle, what type of consumer product brands and retailers should be thinking about an NFT strategy as an imp- or digital strategy, digital goods strategy as an important part of future growth? Wow. Nibble on um, that one. Yeah, that's it. I always love when I get the really tough ones. Thanks, Kristen. Um, <laughs> I, you know, this is, I think this is going to shock you. I think it might shock Kristen. It might shock the entire a team. It might shock our, shock our listeners. I'm going to kind of say everyone. Like, I think every consumer brand yep. needs to be thinking about this. And here's why again. Because here's this what is a hard, This is a hard pivot from Chris Walton based I on know, previous conversations. I now, when this is going to happen, I think is a different question. Fair. But looking at this and evaluating, I think, and what it is applicable to in the long run, I think is everyone. And I'll say this because of this. Like I was watching those videos this week. The Mark Zuckerberg and it reminded me of tour this, of the metaverse. Is that what yeah, you're referring the Facebook to? Yeah, the Facebook and yeah. the Microsoft one. And, and it reminded me, I don't know if you remember this t-shirt I bought when we first started doing this, but it was like one of those black t-shirts with big white writing. It said, I'm much more interesting on the internet, right? Which is which is totally true. If anyone's okay. listening, if you actually know me, I'm not as interesting as I sound on this podcast. Debatable. But <laughs> debatable. Thanks, Ed. I appreciate that. Um, but like in the metaverse, that is going to be taken to a whole nother level, which yes. means we're going to be able to create our own personalities. We're going to be able to acquire goods to showcase who we are. We're going to be able to bling ourselves out in new ways. So it's like, a second life. You get is. to have a second version of yourself that you get to create. Yes. Yes. And I kind of like it because it, in some ways it's egalitarian too, because it takes away what do we look like and levels the playing field for who's creative and who can make be interesting in that space so there's a lot of benefits to it there's also a lot of weird stuff to it too but i I, but but to that answer i think if you have a brand that people crave in the real world i don't see why it can't be craved in this new metaverse too totally totally chris i was yeah absolutely i mean i was having this conversation with my dad last night and we were talking about this in relation to facetime because my dad's never heard of the metaverse in you know crypto we were talking about the whole the whole gambit but I was saying like, dad, do you think our grandparents had any concept of FaceTime? Like, just think about our grandparents two generations ago. And my dad said to me, he goes, and I didn't have any concept of FaceTime. So I feel like if you look at just like what's happened in the last 15 years since the iPhone came out, like it's conceivable that even though it's crazy yeah, that this can happen in our lifetime. So I completely agree with you. I think that everybody should be thinking about this in some capacity. Like I'm not saying dedicate all your R&D resources to it, but especially that Nike's getting into it. I mean, Nike is the most loved brand among Gen Z, Gen Alpha, consistently have been for years. So we know that this is going to be an important play for other brands to be paying attention to if Nike's dedicating this much of their time into this metaverse. And, you know, we, I think some of us started to kind of laugh this off. We talked about it earlier this year when you know, Robux and uh, you could use Robux to buy PacSun clothing in the Roblox world. Right. And, but now it's like, you mentioned Microsoft, Ralph Lauren, like all these brands right. are getting into it. And I think that it's just, it's going to be more prevalent than we can even imagine for these next generations who've been coming up playing video games and, and have just been growing up online in another universe pretty much already. So yeah, I, 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 I agree with you. I think like, you know, to me, that's the way I see this too, is like, especially given the announcement with Nike is like the NFT space, I think, you know, that'll heat up first, right? There's yeah. a lot you can do in there outside of just the metaverse kind of concept. And the metaverse will come at some point, but like, I remember I have a good friend at Facebook who I take a, a, I take a lot of, I learn a lot from, and he, you know, I can remember, you know, 10 years ago, he told me voice was going to be the next big thing. And I'm still waiting for that to hit. And, <laughs> and you know, he's, and, you know, so like, you know, I think this is coming, but I think, you know, we, it's probably going to slow the roll on when we're all going to see it and when we're all actively participating, given the hardware effects and, you know, everything else we've talked about in the past too, like, especially like what categories of business hit VR first, like we right. tend to like to joke about, but, um, but yeah, that, that's kind of my take here. It's, it's a fun, it's, it's, it's fun to watch and think about. 
And well, yes. And OmniTalk listeners, we want to know what you think. So tell us in yeah. the comments from the show, like, please tell us if you're pro metaverse or con or where you fall on the spectrum. 